Well, so let me give you this example. This is actually an example you have seen. And last time I did this, I just told you that I was doing it wrong and never actually corrected it. It's because I was waiting for this to get developed. So let me give you the example again. It's an example of collision, what we would call completely inelastic collision. And I guess we still call it that. So you have some you know, level plane, mass m, and I have another mass m, which is uh, the example we used last time was some reasonable speed of 0.8 c that this is moving at. This is at rest. So after collision, what we said was, well, they stick together. It's one big mass that's moving at some speed final. Right? And we looked at this so as we are introducing special relativity. You know, your non-relativistic intuition says that this should be half of this. We got as far as uh, um, this last time where it's not actually half. But we had to make an assumption about the mass, which turned I told you then was incorrect. And we never actually worked out the correct mass. Um, so let me recast this problem in terms of conservation of energy momentum for vector. So last time we just used conservation of just the uh, three momentum vector, as in conservation of the momentum vector that you are already familiar with. Now, what I'm saying is, well, it's not just the momentum part that's conserved, it's the entire four vector that's conserved. So you could say, all right, then uh, what the, so conservation of four momentum, what it's saying is that when you have, um, the four momentum component before collision. So total energy before, uh, let me, total energy before, and total momentum before. What this conservation principle is saying is that this ought to equal total energy after and total momentum after. Like principle we are using sounds simple enough. Yeah. And when you write down the exact expressions, let me do that uh, first, because that's where you will see if we have to go through all the math to figure it out, this can get quite complicated. So, um, so let me write that. Total energy before. That would be um, total energy of this mass and this mass. Uh, I'm going to use a one to label these quantities and two to label these quantities just so that I have something to label my gammas with. So energy conservation says gamma one mc squared, total energy of this plus energy of this mc squared is equal to the total final energy of this combined mass which I'm going to call capital M. It's going to have some different mass, it's not two M, it's something else. So it'll be gamma two big M C squared. So that's energy conservation. All right, I think we wrote down momentum conservation correctly last time, let me write it again. So it's gamma one M V one, momentum of this, zero momentum is equal to total momentum of the whole thing. Gamma one big M uh, v, uh, not gamma one, gamma two big M V two. Good. Okay, so we have two equations. How many unknowns do we have? Guess we can go through. Do we know gamma one? Yes, we do. Um, small m, I mean, these are presumed to be given. V1 is known, okay. Do we know gamma two? No, one. Do we know um, V2? No, two. Yeah, if you are counting these as one unknown, that's fine. Oh, well, so we have only one unknown. What's the second unknown? Yeah. So we have essentially, so you know, if you count the gamma, then you have two unknowns, two equations. You ought to be able to do it. But let me tell you this. Um, you will run into some problems. So the biggest problem, well, Actually, you know, there is a way to do it. Let me just tell you what the easy trap that I used to fall into was so that you will know there's a better way. The easy trap I used to fall into was 
I would rewrite gammas in terms of V. So when I see this, my first instinct would say, oh, I need to rewrite this as mv2 over square root of 1 minus v2 squared over c squared. That's my first instinct. And the algebra that results from this first step will usually be complicated because you are squaring stuff, you are square rooting stuff. Uh, um, it ends up being somewhat complicated. And I will tell you most of the time when you have to do algebra, it works out a lot better for you. If you, instead of writing gamma in terms of V, if you write V in terms of gamma. For one, like if you don't have any intuition for what gamma and V are, you can see that that's actually easier because you have only one thing to rewrite instead of two different things to rewrite. So this is where it's uh, helpful to have this memorized. Um, from this definition of gamma, I happen to have this memorized. V is equal to C times the square root of 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. You've seen me write this down a few times. So <laughs> that's why I have it memorized after a week or so of doing special relativity because it's useful enough. So, Instead of rewriting gamma, I would rewrite V and write this down. So say that it's a gamma 2 times uh, big M times this, which does involve square root. So square root of 1 minus um, 1 over gamma squared, but uh, gamma 2 squared. But what you will see is that as you absorb gamma into the square root, it actually simplifies quite a bit. It's a big M times the square root of gamma 2 squared minus 1. And this at least doesn't have fractions. Still have square root, you're still going to need to square stuff, but uh, the algebra that follows from this will be a lot simpler. And after you find the gamma 2, then you can you know, plug it in and find what we find all this. Um, now, let me do a different calculation that actually makes use of what we just went over. So let's say, um, uh, let's say, um, well, so this wasn't the actual question, but let's say instead of this, we are asked what the mass of the resulting thing is. If you follow this approach, then you really have no choice. Um, well, I guess you could skip a step, solve it for gamma, plug it in, eliminate it, and then solve for m. I think that might be a way to do it. But let me give you something that's conceptually simpler. <laughs> so this is, this is what I can tell you that's conceptually simpler. And it'll, it often turns out to be algebraically simpler. So this is the conservation of energy and momentum I have. So what it's saying is, well, this is my energy, and this is my momentum. And uh, as long as I'm talking about the total energy and total momentum before or after collision, it's the same thing, right? Now, what I know from this discussion of Lorentz invariant is if I calculate this quantity, E total squared over C squared minus the momentum total squared, if I calculate this quantity, that's going to straight away give me the mass. That'll right away give me, uh, let me write it on the left hand side. This will right away give me M squared C squared, or in our case, capital M squared C squared. So that's all I have to do now. Yeah? So is it capital M or 2M? Oh, it's the combined mass of the whole thing. So, so it's the rest mass? Mm, yes. So, so rest mass is? So in the process of collision, what we said in non-relativist mechanics was that your mechanical energy was lost, right? Yeah. What we say now is that in the process of collision, yes, some of the kinetic energy is gone, but that goes into the total energy of the combined mass. Oh, so the combined thing is actually heavier than 2n because it's a, the rest energies plus some additional kinetic energy that's now in the form of rest energy. Yeah? Yeah. 
So yeah, and I can calculate this in any frame, except if I do it here, then I'm just going to get this back, you know, n square, c square is equal to n square, c square. I don't want that. Like, I already knew that. I already know capital M is equal to capital M. So what I need to do is I need to compute this in this reference frame. And that will give me the answer for this right away without having to go through anything else. Let me just go through that and show you. Um, well, let's you know, go through it and see. So total energy, that's total energy. So that's uh, gamma 1 uh, m, or let me do it, put it this way, gamma 1 plus 1. So gamma 1 plus 1 mc squared um, divide, or the whole thing squared divided by c squared minus the momentum um, gamma 1 m1 v1 squared. Yeah. All right. Um, let me do some factoring. Let me factor out um, m squared, c squared from both sides. So factoring out m squared, c squared from both sides. Uh, actually, before I do that, let me simplify it a little bit. This c squared, it um, cancels out one factor of the c squared. So let me distribute this exponent. So square, square, and it remains at 2 because of this. And distributing this, the square, square, square. Good? Yes. All right. Out of this, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to factor out m1, not m1. No, just the m. m squared and c squared. Now, it might confuse you a little bit because I don't have any c squared here. As I factor out c squared, I'm just going to put a c squared in the denominator. That way, when I distribute it back in, I still get the same thing. So let me do that. So I get m squared c squared times um, the rest of the stuff, gamma 1 plus 1 squared, gamma 1 plus 1 squared um, minus v, uh, gamma 1 squared v1 uh, squared. Uh, gamma 1 squared, V1 squared, and because I'm factoring out C squared that's not there, divided by C squared. Yeah. Um, I can actually simplify this a little bit. That will um, allow me to bypass plugging in expressions for V because some things are just going to cancel out. So let me just uh, finish that. Um, so taking this expression, uh, I'm going to expand the gamma 1 plus 1 squared. And then combine that with this. So let me write that out here. So gamma 1 squared plus 2 gamma 1, right? Plus 1, that's gamma 1 plus 1 squared, minus gamma 1 squared, V1 squared over C squared. I see two like terms that both have gamma 1 squared in them. Let me combine the two. So you get first these two terms by themselves. 2 gamma 1 plus 1. And um, so minus gamma 1 squared times uh, 1 minus v1 squared over c squared. What is this quantity? Yeah, 1 over gamma squared, right? So you get, well, these two cancel out. This is equal to that, so it's 1. I have plus 1, minus 1, so they actually cancel out again. So this, uh, what seems to be complicated expression, actually simplifies down to this. This is equal to 2 gamma 1. So that's the answer for the mass. Um, so m squared is equal to Small, so that's uh, this m squared is equal to 2 gamma 1, 2 gamma 1, small m squared, 
And so if I want the answer for just m, answer for just m would be um, square root of, or square root of 2 gamma times, wait, that doesn't sound right. I messed up something. No, no, I, I don't want to deal with the c squared. Um, I feel like that should be greater than 2. What did I mess up? No, at the very bottom. This one? Uh, the, the purple one. Yeah. No, this is minus. So I have 1 minus 1. Uh, let me do a quick check. If gamma 1 is equal to 1, this should have been 2 squared. So it should have been 4. So that's where I messed up something. So when I square this, gamma 1 squared plus 2 gamma 1 plus 1. Here this is still 4. Minus gamma 1 squared v1 squared. 2 gamma plus 1. Oh, oh I, I see what you mean. This should have been mi not minus sign, but plus sign, right? That's what you're saying. Good. Thank you. Plus sign. <laughs> so instead of these two canceling out, the, sorry about the mistake. So it's 1 plus 1. So this is 2 gamma plus, one, uh, plus 2. <laughs> 2 gamma plus 2. All right. So that's the correct answer. Everyone follow? Good. Sorry about the mistake. So this is uh, 2 gamma 1 plus 2 m squared. So the, when you solve this for mass, then it's uh, square root of. 2 gamma plus 2 times m. Does this answer make sense? So one of the ways to check your answer, if it makes sense, is to consider its a limit. It's a, the, what the value of the answer in the simplest case. Here, the simplest would be if gamma was equal to 1 or close enough to 1. So it's a non-relativistic. What do you expect the big M to be in non-relativistic case? Two. Yeah, 2, right? So if gamma is equal to 1, then that's 4. So square root of that, 2, 2M. Two yeah, that's what you'd expect. Now, as its speed increases, gamma increases from 1. So this whole number becomes greater than 2. Is that what you should expect? Yeah, as the energy, the kinetic energy goes into the rest energy of this mass, and as it becomes greater in proportion, this mass should go up. So yeah, so this is the calculation that, I don't know if it's that much easier. There are other examples where you can simplify what could have been, so it could have been more complicated than this. This is the simpler version that makes use of this expression that's easy to forget, unless you remember it's a Lorentz invariant.